Coming up on 5-Minute News. Donald Trump makes false claim that Pence should have sent back votes. Biden meets with GOP to seek Supreme Court support. And Pfizer seeks approval for vaccines for under fives. It's Wednesday, February 2. I'm Anthony Davis. Over a year after his election loss, Donald Trump is intensifying his effort to advance the false narrative that his vice president, Mike Pence, could have done something to prevent Joe Biden from taking office. In a statement on Tuesday, Trump said the committee investigating his role in sparking the violent January 6 insurrection should instead probe why Mike Pence did not send back the votes for recertification or approval. In another statement on Sunday, he blasted Pence by falsely claiming that he could have overturned the election. Both statements appear to double down on Trump's conspiracy that the election was fraudulent despite zero evidence. Numerous states and federal election officials, as well as Trump's own attorney general, have said the vote was fair. Trump's escalating rhetoric comes in response to at least two developments on Capitol Hill. He is undergoing scrutiny from the committee investigating the insurrection for his role in sparking the attack, and a bipartisan group of lawmakers is pushing changes to the Electoral Count Act to eliminate any ambiguity that a vice president could reject electors to prevent a future president from making the same threats. Meanwhile, the New York Times has reported that Trump was directly involved in efforts to use national security agencies to seize voting machines after the 2020 election loss, pressing his lawyer to make queries as advisers drafted two versions of a related executive order. The Times reported on Monday that Trump directed Rudy Giuliani to call the Department of Homeland Security to determine whether it could legally take control of voting machines in key swing states. President Joe Biden hosted Senate Judiciary Committee leaders from both parties at the White House on Tuesday as Democrats worked to gain significant GOP support for his Supreme Court nominee, a steep challenge in a Senate that has been sharply and bitterly divided over the past three confirmations. He also reached out to Senate Republican leader Mitch McConnell, discussing the upcoming replacement of Stephen Breyer by phone. At the White House, Biden called Judiciary Chairman Dick Durbin of Illinois and the top Republican on the panel, Iowa Senator Chuck Grassley, two good friends, and noted that the three of them had worked together previously in their decades on the panel. He noted that the Constitution calls for Senate advice and consent on a nominee, and he said, I'm serious when I say I want the advice of the Senate as well as the consent. Meanwhile, Texas Senator Ted Cruz called President Biden's commitment to nominate the first black woman to the Supreme Court offensive and said by doing so, the president is telling other Americans, you are ineligible. Last week, Mississippi Senator Roger Wicker, a Republican, said Biden's nominee will be a beneficiary of affirmative action. White House spokesman Andrew Bates said the president's promise to nominate and confirm a black woman to the Supreme Court is in line with the best traditions of both parties and our nation. Pharmaceutical giant Pfizer asked the US to authorize ultra-low doses of its COVID-19 vaccine for children under five on Tuesday, potentially opening the way for the very youngest Americans to start receiving shots as early as March. In an extraordinary move, the Food and Drug Administration had urged Pfizer and its partner BioNTech to apply earlier than the companies had planned. The nation's 19 million children under five are the only group not yet eligible for vaccination against the coronavirus. Many parents have been pushing for an expansion of shots to toddlers and preschoolers, especially as the Omicron wave sent record numbers of youngsters to the hospital. If the FDA agrees, Pfizer shots containing one-tenth of the dose given to adults could be dispensed to children as young as six months. Pfizer said yesterday it had started submitting its data to the FDA and expects to complete the process in a few days. 
Meanwhile, a new study from MIT suggests that the dozens of mutations in the spike protein of the Omicron variant help it to evade all four of the classes of antibodies that can target the SARS-CoV-2 virus that causes COVID-19. This includes antibodies generated by vaccinated or previously infected people, as well as most of the monoclonal antibody treatments that have been developed. Even though Omicron is able to evade most antibodies to some degree, vaccines still offer protection by producing T-cells, which provide additional forms of protection. You can subscribe to 5-Minute News on YouTube with your preferred podcast app. Ask your smart speaker or enable 5-Minute News as your Amazon Alexa flash briefing skill. Subscribe, rate and review online at 5minute.news. 5-Minute News is an evergreen podcast covering politics, inequality, health and climate, delivering independent, unbiased and essential world news daily.